creating an effective elevator pitch. This is what we are going to be jumping in today. This is a technique that's been taught for a while. Uh, I like it. Uh, what I don't like about it is most people don't know how to use it and when they are trying to explain what they do for a living, it's not interesting, it's boring, or they just go on and on and on and on. And folks, you don't have time to do that when you're marketing your services at a networking event, or say you're on the phone and you're calling people, people wanna know, what are you doing? Of course, my name is Step Steven Sidnor, and I'm the creator of the two meeting close selling process. Two meeting close, meaning you can shorten the sales cycle by doing an effective initial meeting with executives get a real interest for a proposal, come back and do a proposal. Now you may have a meeting that happens in between there, but there's nothing more important than your initial meeting with an executive. And that's what I teach people, how to meet comfortably with an executive and get their engagement. So you're not lost, you're not fumbling around and you're, you're looked upon by the executive as a consultant partner problem solver. Those things are done with a process. Well, this is a process too, creating an effective elevator pitch. So let's jump into this technique in the time that we have together and you'll be able to work on this right after we're done and using it almost immediately. So about the technique, well an elevator pitch, if you ever walked into an elevator and pushed a button, uh, you don't have a lot of time to get to the next floor, right? So it's a brief speech. It's a persuasive speech you can use to create what? Interest that your organization does. You can also use it to create interest or conversation about a project, idea, or product, or even in yourself. A good elevator pitch, it lasts no longer than 20, 30 seconds, hence the name, right? Now, your elevator pitch should be interesting, memorable, and it needs to get to the point. They also need to explain what you do, tell me about your organization, your product, or idea, and make it unique so it's different than other people. So when do you want to use an elevator pitch? Well, some people think it's a, something I use just for salespeople who pitch their products and services. And yes, that's true. Uh, but you can also use in other situations. For example, let's say you have an idea you want to pitch to your boss. This is a great way, a great technique to keep your thoughts organized so that you feel more heard. Uh, you can tell people about change initiative that you're learning. You can even craft and tell people what you do for a living if you're at a uh, organization, networking event, or school event, a fundraiser event, or something like this. When people say, hey, tell me what you do, this is a great way uh, to get their interest and find out, or is this an audience that you should be talking to? It could be that you, you met with a potential buyer, but they didn't know that because you just said, I'm in financial management, or I'm in real estate. Well, there's a lot of real estate people out there. I'm in insurance. Well, there's a lot of insurance people out there. What makes you so different? I'm in technology sales, I'm in software sales, I sell data services. Well, there's a lot of companies that do that. So what makes you different? Well, you should know that and this uh, short video training will actually help you to do that. So the first thing when you are creating an effective elevator pitch for, for uh, influence, you start by thinking about what's the objective of your pitch? What is your goal that you're trying to accomplish? For instance, do you want to tell potential clients about your organization? Do you have a great new product idea that you want to pitch to an executive? Or do you simply just want to create an engaging speak to explain uh, what you do for a living? Now, the components of an effective elevator pitch are simply this. Number one, just explain what you do. Uh, for instance, I am in the training business, training coaching business, so what do I do? I train individuals to improve their performance in companies. Uh, then you want to communicate your USP right here. That's a unique selling proposition. You've probably heard that before, and if you haven't, uh, you may hear it in the future if you're a, um, a, a rookie rep that maybe just started with a company. But the, what makes you different than everybody else and engage with the question? So number one, explain what you do. Number two, communicate your USP, unique selling proposition. Number three, engage with a question. So here's an example, software training company. So my company develops mobile applications that businesses use to train their staff remotely. Well, a better explanation would be this. My company develops mobile applications that businesses use to train their staff remotely. That's what we said above. But now we're going to add a little something a little bit more interesting. This results in what? Big increase. Like those words. 
people want to know what results are you getting for other people. If you've been through my two million close training, you know the whole thing about verbal, third-party verbal success stories. Uh, it's a tool that I uh, teach a lot of, and I want to tell you what, it is the game changer. It is what sells companies on you when you do a third-party verbal success story. Well, the end of that is tell them the results you get for companies. What do companies say you do for them? And that's what you're doing here. The results, this results in a big increase in efficiency for organization and managers. That's interesting, right? You want to identify what makes you and your organization idea. This is a unique selling proposition. You want to communicate this USP after you talk about what you do. It follows immediately after unique selling proposition. Your unique selling proposition or USP tells people uh, what this means to them. So if you just told them that you're a training company, you need to go ahead and finish that out. So this means that senior managers can spend time on other important tasks. Like, uh, unlike similar companies, we visit each organization to find out exactly what people need. That's the USP right there. A lot of training companies out there, folks, a lot of technical companies, a lot of data companies, but what makes you interesting? What makes you different for this company? They visit each organization to find out exactly what people need. Well, you're probably thinking, well, who cares? Well, look at the next statement. What this means is on average, 95% of our clients are happy with the first version of their app. What does that mean? That means that I don't have to be messing around with something that's not working yet. I'm not paying for something that when it comes out, I have to, you know, I'm the guinea pig to make sure it works. That wastes my time. Uh, it's frustrating, and so this would be important if you're interested in their service. And you end with a question, which ask an open-ended question. Don't ask a closed-ended question. So how does your organization, in this example, so how does your organization handle the training of new people? That's a great way to start a conversation. All right, so this should take about 20 or 30 seconds, so get your watch out. And uh, go ahead and pull a watch out of something here. I'm looking at mine right now. Let me read it. Hey, my company uh, develops mobile applications that businesses use to train their staff remotely. And what this means is a big increase in efficiency for organization managers. Now, your senior manager should be spending more time on important tasks. Unlike other similar companies, we visit each organization to find out exactly what those people need. This means, on average, 95% of our clients are satisfied with the first version of the application. So tell me, how does your organization handle the training of new people? Folks, did you time that? That was about 30 seconds. People have time to listen to what you have to say in 30 seconds, and it becomes memorable, right? So the components of an effective elevator pitch, number one, explain what you do. Just make it simple. Put it in layman's terms, okay? A lot of us that are in the technology business, we like to talk in technology terms. And clients don't really understand what that, what that means unless you're meeting with somebody in that same audience, right? Uh, so can we explain what you do in layman's terms. Communicate your unique selling proposition. Now, folks, this is a great exercise for you. I promise that if you'll work on this and practice this and then try it out, uh, you're going to be a lot farther ahead than your competitors who don't know how to use this technique very effectively. What are they doing? They're just showing up saying anything. Now, I know salespeople that, man, they are diligent in prospecting. They call on a lot of people, and they work the numbers. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd rather um, call on less people but get better conversion rate, right? And if you're a person that calls on a lot of people and just work on the numbers, this technique would work for you. It means you're just going to uh, explode your quota or your income. So learn this technique. Understand how to communicate your unique selling proposition. Next, engage with the question. Don't end with, um, it's nice to meet you. Just end with, ask them how they are doing a particular service uh, that you're offering. And folks, number four, practice, practice, practice. Uh, you know, a lot of people that use my 2 meeting close selling system, it's very popular. It does help you stay confident in front of an executive. It gets their engagement. I mean, it's a wonderful product. Uh, for the cost, and I've seen lots of people go from fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. They're um, six figures, sometimes double six-figure income. But they do that if you really get good. You got to practice, 
you got to practice with somebody. You can't all do it, and you can't do it in your head all the time and not speak it out. It's like learning a new dance. I would teach you a new dance. You're watching me do the dance, and at some point, I got to say, do the dance. You got to move your feet and try to do the structure that maybe a dance instructor is teaching you. That's just an illustration, but you got to practice a lot in order to get this done well. If you do it, you're the one that will benefit from it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short presentation on, on how to create an effective elevator pitch. My name is Step Stevens Sidnor, uh, sales trainer, business performance coach. If you want to know more about me, go to stepupnow.com. Email me at step at stepsidnor.com, and I will be happy to get back with you and answer any questions.